Hello, everyone. Okay. All right. Um, good morning, good afternoon, um, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the 15th um, Pan-Asia Farmers Exchange Program. This is day four of the five-day webinar that we will be holding till tomorrow, so that would be October 22. And I am your moderator for today. I am Maria M. Rodriguez. You can call me Mimi. I am the vice chair of the CropLife Philippine Seeds Committee and currently the Philippine Seeds and Treats Regulatory Manager of Syngenta Philippines. I would like to welcome all the participants from different countries. So Philippines, um, Vietnam, Australia, China, Korea, Taiwan, Indonesia, Thailand, India, Vietnam. Um, sorry, I repeated that. Pakistan, Bangladesh, and everywhere. Uh, for our participants from Vietnam, um, you may listen to the Vietnamese interpretation by clicking the interpretation icon. So that can be found below the screen. And then you can choose um, Japanese. So again, you can, you can choose Japanese for all the Vietnamese um, participants. Okay, um, first for a, maybe perhaps a quick recap on what happened um, during this webinar in the previous days. So we've discussed um, the overview of modern biotechnology, um, genome editing, and then there's a presentation of the um, experience of golden rice by safety regulations and experience and importance of science communication. So that was done um, yesterday. For today's program, there will be two parts. First would be a presentation of a survey on understanding the challenges which our farmers face during this pandemic. This will then be followed by the sharings of our farmers from different countries on their journey in growing GM crops. So before I introduce our first speaker, let me just give some points to remember for the duration of the program. Please type your questions at the Q&A section anytime. So that can be found again um, at the bottom of your screen. Then those questions will be answered at the end of all the presentations. If there are questions that are not accommodated um, during the session due to time constraint, this will be answered through our chat box or via email. E-certificates will be given only to participants who will be able to attend a five-day program. Certificates will be sent to your registered email addresses. There will be, at the end of this session, there will be a $20 question. So please stay tuned uh, until our session ends. Okay, so going back to the main presentation, um, to start, let us hear first the highlights of survey on farmer sustainability and resilience. This will be presented by Ms. Kwe Ai Chen, the Executive Director of Customer Insights of Kinetech. Ms. Ai Chen has been involved in agricultural market research for more than 15 years, with a focus on Asia-Pacific region. She has conducted studies related to crop protection, seeds, fertilizer, other farm input, animal health, pet care, agricultural machinery, and food chain. Ms. Ai Chen currently leads the customer insights team in their region. She's very, she is well versed with different approaches and methodologies commonly used in market research. So this includes experience in tracking studies. Her current focus is on creating the best design, methodological um, solutions, analysis on critical studies on behalf of her clients. She manages a team of 15 experienced market research professionals from um, Australia, China, Malaysia, and India. So with this, um, let us please welcome Ms. Ai Chen. Uh, Ms. Ai Chen, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Mimi. Uh, let me share my screen and then we can start. So let me start then, unless uh, you know some of you can see my screen. So first and foremost, uh, I want to thank Crop Life uh, Asia for inviting me to uh, participate in this program. 
uh, you know, this is a study that we conducted on behalf of Crop Life, uh, you know, during you know the height of the pandemic to some extent. Uh, and the whole study is just to really understand, uh, you know, a lot of the challenges that farmer is facing and some of the opportunity that they will realize uh, in the recent month, uh, including some of the uh, you know, including the uh, concerns about pandemic. So I'm going to uh, just share with you some of the background. So uh, the whole back premise was the fact that in Asia particularly, farmers constantly face challenges in terms of the crop production. The challenges are multiple, and that would include, but not limited to, you know, lack of resources, low technology, um, lack of knowledge, uh, lack of accessibility to, uh, you know, new technology, and so on and so forth. Right, but because of the pandemic that is actually hitting every country in the world, it actually further enhanced some of the challenges that these farmers are uh, facing. And the expectation is that could potentially have a negative power implication for millions of farmers. So this study is uh, to really understand and investigate the different uh, challenges that farmers are facing, including how much of the impact of the Sorry. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. Can you please um, come closer to the microphone? Sure, yep. sure. So that we can hear you. Yes. So um, this study is actually to really understand the different challenges that farmer is facing, including the impact on COVID-19. Um, in addition to understand the various challenges, we also wanted to capture, because of these challenges, what are some of the possible changes in practices and behavior that they are taking now or would like to take in the future, right? So some of it could be adopting new technology, considering more advanced solutions like biotechnology seeds and so on and so forth, right? To maintain their sustainability and resi resilience in the farm as a farmer. So we undertake this study with uh, in four countries. Ms. Ai Chen, sorry. Uh, sorry, Mimi here again. Can we try one more? So let me let me expand my sound and see whether this is <laughs> So Mimi, are you uh, are you hearing it better now? Yes. Can you please make it louder? This is uh, already at maximum, unfortunately. I will I will speak very close to yeah, you. Or, or perhaps can you try uh, moving in the middle? Uh, actually, I am I'm trying to move closer to the computer now. Okay, let's try. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. So let me just try. Right. So we did this study across four countries in ASEAN, uh, namely Thailand, Vietnam, Philippines, and Indonesia. Uh, so in all these countries, we did about, you know, we talked to about 130 farmers on average. Um, so that gives us about 525 farmers that we talked to across all these four countries. The study, the data was captured pretty recent, which is in February and March 2021. So just in quarter one, 2021. And we use a various uh, approach in terms of collecting data. Some of it, unfortunately, would have to be face to face, but uh, we also have a uh, telephonic in some countries. Okay. Uh, I wanted to now share with you highlights the finding across the four countries that we do. So, across the next uh, seven to eight minutes or so, what I'm going to do is to share with you in each of the countries. Uh, what are some of the challenges that uh, farmers have highlighted to us? What are some of the opportunity and growth area that foresee will be able to help them to be more sustainable and resilient as a farmer? And last but not least is also to try to understand uh, what kind of assistance uh, they have received because of the pandemic of COVID-19. So we we'll start off with Thailand. In Thailand, we talk to both rice, corn, and fruit farmers. So a uh, three sub-segment of farmers in Thailand. And according to the Thai farmers, the top three challenges that they face is uh, the lack of access to capital funds and financing. So basically, 
uh, the uh, input, the, uh, the uh, financial for crop production. So they are facing challenges of la lack of access to capital fund and financing. In addition to that, they also face substantial challenges in labor. So in our data, we have seen that two thirds of farmer actually complain about the increase of labor costs. The, uh, the, same, the other two thirds and then actually says the changes of climate uh, is either because of flood too much water, drought too little water is also making their life as a farmer a lot more difficult. One of the key aspects that we want to try to understand within the study is that, uh, you know, in terms of gender inequality, especially in the farming community, we have substantial number of female farmers uh, participate in our survey in Thailand. About 50% of them is actually female farmers. And out of these female farmers, more than four in five of them says that they experience inequality in farming. And some of the inequality they experience is actually lack of access to capital financing or resources. Okay. So on the downside, these are the challenges, but you know, farmers are always very resilient. They are very optimistic. So in that sense, when you look at the opportunity and growth, uh, some of the major opportunity and growth is actually in mechanization. So 50% of them actually plan to adopt mechanization of automation. Similarly, 50% of them will adopt a GM or biotech crop. So in our Thailand, it's uh, not uh, you know, alien or new to biotechnology crop, but so you can see that the adoption and the willingness to adopt biotechnology crop in Thailand is very, very high. More than one third of them say also they would actually adopt a digital digitalization and in terms of which aspect of digitalization that would be related to farming services app and GPS guidance technology. Now, the question is that, you know, are farmers in Thailand getting sufficient support? Almost nine out of them of them says that they receive government ads in terms of COVID-19 and the uh, type of ads they receive is mainly related to extension of uh, repayment. They also say to us that the impact of COVID-19 is actually below average uh, to their farming operation, which means that you know, what they do on a day-to-day -day basis is not substantially impacted because of the pandemic or COVID-19. So the next one I'd like to do is to move on to Indonesia. Within Indonesia, we cover also some of the key crops, which is rice, corn, and fruits. And in Indonesia, I also want to share with you the three key aspects of our finding. Uh, lack of access to capital funding and financing is still top of their mind, very similar to what you have seen earlier on in Thailand. But the other aspect, you know, it's uh, you know, very, very, very relevant for Indonesia is that almost also two thirds of them actually say that you know, climate change, whether it's flood or drought, is a major challenge for them in farming. We have less number of female farmers in Indonesia that uh, participate in the sample, just roughly about 30 of them, but they too actually say that they experience gender inequality in farming, especially related to the opportunity for training and the opportunity for getting funds to run their farm uh, efficiently. In Indonesia, the willingness to adopt mechanization is slightly lower compared to Thailand, but not substantially. But you can see that it also has an overwhelming acceptance to biotechnology uh, crop. So, you know, three out of five farmers say that they would consider adopting GM or biotech crop. And uh, within that, again, um, just about, you know, slightly less than one in five would actually consider digitalization, right? And then within the digitalization, the two aspects they are most interested in will be the GPS and in terms of soil analysis sensor. Again, you know, a very high percentage, almost nine out of 10 of them actually does receive some kind of support from the government because of the pandemic. And most of the support received are related to farm subsidies. Unlike Thailand, the impact of uh, pandemic has a bigger uh, you know, pain point for the uh, Indonesian farmer because they actually 
rated that the impact of COVID-19 is somewhat moderate, uh, you know, impact to the farm operation and personal life. Now, if we look at uh, Philippines, uh, we have again, in Philippines, one of the major differences, apart from rice and corn, we did not cover fruits, but we cover vegetables. So in Thai, uh, sorry, in uh, Philippines, the two main challenges farmers face in terms of farming is actually climate change. So almost uh, eight out of 10 or four out of five actually says that they experience that challenge. And similarly, you know, they also experience increase of pest infestation, whether it's insects or disease or weed, right? Uh, in terms of opportunity and growth, uh, you know, very high percentage, three out of five of them actually adopt mechanization and automation. And not surprisingly, four out of them of them will be adopting or has already adopt GM or biotech uh, crop. Okay. Uh, the acceptance of digitalization is also slightly lower. So one in four of them would consider some kind of uh, digitalization, may it be in terms of soil analysis uh, sensor or satellite imaging. Okay. Similarly, in, uh, you know, with the counterparts in other countries in ASEAN, uh, nine out of them, again, do receive some kind of ads from the government, particularly related to uh, farm uh, subsidies. Similarly, like farmer in Thailand, uh, the impact on COVID-19 or the negative impact of COVID-19 is somewhat uh, you know, below average to a Filipino uh, you know, farm operation. And for the last country, which is Vietnam, in Vietnam, we cover similar crops like uh, Philippines, which is rice, corn, and vegetable. And within um, Vietnam, the Two main challenges we are, they are facing is in terms of you know, lack of access to capital, fund, and financing. So about uh, you know, two-thirds of them is actually experiencing that. And 70% of them actually noted that climate change, whether it's flood or drought, is a major pain point for them. We also have substantial number of female farmers in Vietnam, about 45% of our sample, which means it's more than 50 uh, people are uh, actually female farmer and you know six out of uh three out of five sorry actually says that they experience inequality in farming in terms of opportunity and growth two-thirds say that they will adopt mechanization and automation more than two-thirds says that they are willing to adopt gm or biotech crop and two in five actually says they will adopt digitalization particularly related to satellite imaging farm service application and GPS guidance. Uh, we found out that in uh, Vietnam, only 45% of farmers actually does receive some kind of ads uh, you know, from, the far, uh, from the government related to COVID-19, and it's more in the form of extension of uh, repayment. The negative impact of COVID-19 is also rated to be somewhat average to farm operation and personal life to a uh, Vietnamese farmers. So um, I want to now just stop my presentation because I have, uh, in a way, uh, hopefully share with you something interesting. And, uh, you know, it's an enlightening to you that, you know, how farmer, what are some of the key challenges that they are facing? What are some of the growth uh, and opportunities they foresee themselves in the future? And, you know, how serious is the issue of COVID-19? Uh, you know, impacting farmers' personal life and also their farm operation. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ai Chen, for that um, insightful, insightful presentation yes. and um, what, what sets apart um, about this service that it considers the um, challenges that our farmers face during the pandemic. So thank you and also for sharing the growth opportunities and um and the like. So please stay tuned, uh, Miss Ai Chen. Um, since uh, we're going to have the Q and A session towards the end of the session, so we're going to entertain those questions towards the end. So thank you, Miss Ai Chen. Okay. Um. So moving on um to the next presentation. So this would be our first farmer story. So it's about the BT egg plant in Bangladesh. We're going to watch a video presentation. So again, later during the Q&A session, our BT eggplant farmer 
from Kwadanga District of Bangladesh, Mr. Azizur Rahman will join. So Bowie, um, please play the video, please. Brinjal, also known as eggplant, is one of the most important crops in Bangladesh. As farmer Muhammad Shah Jahan says, if the crop survives, it makes good profit. But the key is getting the crop to survive. <laughs> Binjal is a very popular vegetables in Bangladesh, but the main obstacle or main drawbacks of this crop cultivation is insect attack. It is fruit and shoot drawer. To control that fruit and shoot drawer, farmers indiscriminately use insecticide. If they spray in the morning, in the evening, they are harvesting their benzel and going to the market. So it is very dangerous for the not only uh, environment but also it uh, affect our health. Begun gastar war for a. Apna jodi bista jodi na dey, tale gasta mara jabe. Muna karan bistele to shorilar khoti hai, shorilar to durbal thake. Apna jaya. By using indiscriminate uh, pesticide, uh, we pollute our environment, our water, our air. Farmers often hire laborers to do the spraying, and these workers get frequent prolonged exposure to insecticides. Besides health risks, farmers face significant expenses when buying and applying insecticides. But that could change dramatically with genetically engineered BT Brinjal. Bangladesh is the first nation in the world to make this new variety available to its farmers. As the rest of South Asia watches, Bangladeshi farmers are reporting higher yields, better market prices, and greatly reduced pesticide use. All indications that this cutting-edge agricultural technology can improve their lives. Bt is widely used in growing organic crops. It kills targeted insects, but has no effect on beneficial predator or pollinator insects, as well as humans, other mammals, and birds. Bangladeshi farmers are growing Bt brinjal in observation fields to see how the crop performs in the ground and at the market before seeds are made available for widespread distribution. My name is Habizur Rahman, Blaze Kunabari, Tangal Shodor, Bari Betun Begun Dui, Emung Tin. আমি প্রথম এই কোলাম টাঙ্গালি যে বেগুন চাষ করতাম আমি লোকাল বেগুন ওইগুলাতে ডগা ফল সিদ্রিকারি পোকা ছিল যার কারণে আমার পচির পরিমাণে কীটনাশক প্রয়োগ করা হতো অর্থের অপচয় হতো এইটা বিটি বেগুন আর এটা নন বিটি বেগুন একই সঙ্গে লাগানো এটি এই নন বিটি কেবল ফুল আসছে আর এটি অলরেডি তিনটে বেগুন ধরে গেছে একটা বেগুন তুইলে এখন বাজারজাত করা যাবে নন বিটি বেগুন এই এতগুলা গাছ কিন্তু বেগুন নেই একটা গাছে বেগুন পালাম এই বেগুন নাই পোকা লাগিয়ে গেছে বেগুন বাজারে বিক্রি হবে না এগুলো ছাগলে খাবে অথবা গত্তে খাবে গরু এই দেখেন কত পোকা স্যার বললো যে কীটনাশক মুক্ত বেগুন জমি তৈরি ছিল এনে লাগিয়ে দিলাম যে ছোট ছোট সারা লেবার লাগাচ্ছে বসে বেগুন হবে না যখন বেগুন ধরে গিয়েছে ছোট গাছে তখন আমি দেখলাম তো হবে তখন থেকে যত্ন করলাম 
প্রথম দিনই পঞ্চান্ন কেজি বেগুন উঠেছে আমার কিছু সার দিলাম দিয়ে ই করলাম সেচ দেবো আগামীকাল সেচ দিয়ে ধান এরপরে মনে হয় আমার মনে হয় একশো কেজির উপরে হবে আমার নাম মোহাম্মদ মিলন মিয়া আমার বয়স ছত্রিশ বছর আগের বেগুন পার্থক্য আগের আমাদের যে স্থানীয় জাত ছিল এত বড় ছিল না ছোট ছোট এবং পার্থক্য এইটুকুই আগে হয়তো একটা গাছের পাঁচটা বেগুন তুললে তিনটে ফেলে দেওয়া লাগতো দুইটা ভালো পাওয়া যেত আর বর্তমানে যে বেগুনটা আমরা বিক্রি করছি এখন এই জমি থেকে উঠেলে যে আমরা এখন আজ পর্যন্ত একটা পোকা পাইনি প্লাস কৃষ্ণা কীটনাশকের কোনো মানে ব্যবহার আমরা করি নাই এটাতে আশেপাশের লোক সবাই আরও খুশি এবং ওরা বলতেছে যে আসলে এটা কি আমাকে ওকে একটা বাগুন তাড়াতাড়ি দাও আমার আগে একটা নিজে খাইয়ে দেখি এইভাবে দিতে দিতে তারা ওখানে কাবি সারা সবাই একটা করে লেখা শুরু করে দিতে উই নিড নট অ্যাপ্লাই পেস্টিসাইড দ্যাটস ওয়াই হিউজ অ্যামাউন্ট অফ মানি উইল বি সেভ টু আস অর আওয়ার ফার্মার দিস ক্রপ ইজ বেনিফিশিয়াল ফর আস নাম আব্দুল সালাম গ্রাম আখন্দেবাড়িয়া আমি নতুন জাতের বেগুন চাষ করেছি এই বেগুনের পুরো কীটনাশক দিতে হয় না সাধারণত যে বেগুন আমরা চাষ করি ওই বেগুন এক হাজার টাকার বেগুন বেচলে আপনার পাঁচ থেকে ছয়শো টাকার ওষুধ দিতে হয় আর আমি এটা নতুন চাষ করেছি এতে কোনো পোকা নেই ফলনটাও ভালো বাজারে বিক্রিও বেশি আমার নাম মোহাম্মদ ফুলুর রহমান এই বছর এই বাগানটা আপনার সারে রাজে দিছে তাতে মনে হয় যে এটা আমাদের অনেক লাভ হবে বাকি বিটি বেগুন দুই আর তিন এই দুইটা জাতের বাগান এখানে আছে আর কি আনুমানিক এখানে হয় দুই মনের মতন আশি কেজির মতো উঠানো আছে আজকে যেটা হচ্ছে তাতে এখানে প্রায় এক মনের কাছাকাছি যাবে আর কি নর্মাল নর্মাল বেগুন হলে অর্ধেকের কাছাকাছি তো আর কি ফালাই দিতে হইতো আর এই বেগুন নেবিতে একটা বেগুন ফেলে যেতে চাইতেছে না কি পুরা বেগুনটাই থাকতেছে কৃষি সম্প্রসারণের কাজ হচ্ছে নতুন নতুন তথ্য প্রযুক্তি কৃষকের মাঝে ছড়িয়ে দেওয়া কৃষক যে বেগুন উৎপন্ন করে বাজারে বিক্রি করার পরে যে টাকাটা পায় তার সিংহভাগ হইল দোকানদারকে দিয়ে আসতে হয় এখন বিটি বেগুন যারা চাষ করছে তারা বলছে যে ভাই সমস্ত টাকাটাই এখন বাড়িতে নিয়ে যেতে হচ্ছে আমরা তো অনেক বেগুনই দেখেছি স্যার কিন্তু এই রকম বেগুন তো আমরা কোনোদিন দেখিনি আজও বেগুন একটা যে বেগুনই কোনো দিনও বিষ দেওয়া হয়নি এবং বিষ লাগে না এবং বিষ ছাড়া প্রতিটা গাছ কোনো গাছে একটা ডুগাও এরকম কাজ হয়নি বিনা বেশি হয়েছে এই রকম বেগুন আমাদের দেশে নিয়ে এসে আপনারা আমাদের দেবেন আমরা এরকম বেগুনে চাষ করব এই বিটি বেগুনে আমাদের দরকার আমি ডক্টর মোহাম্মদ রবিউল আলম উদ্বোধন বৈজ্ঞানিক কর্মকর্তা হিসেবে বাংলাদেশ কৃষি গবেষণা ইনস্টিটিউট সরজমিন গবেষণা বিভাগ কৃষি গবেষণা পাবনাতে কর্মরত আছি মাঠ এখানে বিটি বেগুন দুই যেটা তার বীজ উৎপাদন কর্মসূচি চলছে মাঠে এই বিটি বেগুনের যে বীজ উৎপাদন হবে সেই উৎপাদন দিয়ে পরবর্তীতে আরও ব্যাপক বাংলাদেশের ব্যাপক এলাকায় কৃষকের মাঝে সেই বিটি বেগুন উৎপাদনের কার্যক্রম সমন্বয় সম্প্রসারিত হবে তা আমার এটা আমাদের বাড়ি এবং আমার পাশে আমার ওয়াইফ এবং আমার সন্তান তা তো খাইতে ভালো কোনো তো সমস্যা হচ্ছে না সবাই তো ভালো বলিচ্ছে খাচ্ছে সবাই আমি প্রথমেই বলছি যে প্রথম যখন দুইটে ধরছে ওই দুইটে আগে আমরা নিয়েছে খাইছি খাইছি প্রথমেই আচ্ছা ভাজা খাইছি বাইটা খাইছি কীটনাশক দেওয়া লাগে না এটা তো ভালো তারপরে আমাদের অর্থ লাগিছে না পরিশ্রম হচ্ছে না শরীরের পক্ষ ভালো হচ্ছে পরিবেশের পক্ষ ভালো হচ্ছে কালকেও বেগুন লেগেছে আমি বলছি এটা কীটনাশক ছাড়া এটা নিরাপদে আমরা খাবেন কোনো সমস্যা ইনশাল্লাহ হবে না তো আমার অন্য প্রায় দশ বছরের বেগুন চাষের অভিজ্ঞতা দশ বছরের মধ্যে গত বছর বেগুন চাষ করে যে ফলন আমি পেয়েছি এরকম ফলন আমি আর জীবনে আমি কোথাও কোনো দিন দেখেও নাই আমার এলাকাবাসীও দেখে নাই তো এই জন্য এলাকাবাসী উদ্বুদ্ধ আমি উদ্বুদ্ধ এবং আমি খুবই আগ্রহী যাতে এই বেগুন আমি ভালোভাবে আরও চাষ করতে পারি কৃষি মন্ত্রণালয় এবং হচ্ছে কৃষি সম্প্রসারণ অধিদপ্তরের পক্ষ থেকে কৃষক পর্যায়ে এইবার প্রথম বিটি বেগুনের চাষ সম্প্রসারণের উদ্যোগ গ্রহণ করা হয়েছে এবং খুব চমৎকার একটা রেজাল্ট আমরা মাঠে দেখতে পাচ্ছি যেখানে কৃষক ফল ডগা ছিদ্রকারী পোকা মারার জন্য কোনো বিষ সে ব্যবহার করেনি সুতরাং বিটি বেগুন নিয়ে কোনো সংশয় রাখা উচিত না এবং কৃষক পর্যায়ে ইতিমধ্যে এটা ব্যাপক জনপ্রিয় যেমন হয়েছে এবং কৃষক কিন্তু আমাদের কৃষি অফিসে কিন্তু একটা ডিমান্ড একটা তারা তৈরি করেছে যে আমাদের এই বিষ এবং 
আমাদের চারা সামনের বার দিতে হবে কৃষকরা ইতিমধ্যে এই বেগুন চাষ করার জন্য উদ্বুদ্ধ হয়েছে এবং অনেকেই করছে তো আগামীতে আরো অনেকেই করবে আমিও করব ইনশাল্লাহ উপকারে এবং লাভজনক চাষ হিসাবে যদি বলা যায় এই বিটি বেগুন চাষটা খুবই কৃষকদের জন্য লাভজনক তাই সতেরো মন্দ উঠাইতে পাঁচশো করে বেচতে পারলো সাড়ে আঠারো টাকা আমি প্রতি প্রতি সপ্তাহে আমি পাবো তো মাসে হচ্ছে আমার চায়ের আসটা বত্রিশ তিরিশ বত্রিশ হাজার টাকা মাসে পাবো চায়ের মাস পাবো বেগুন চার মাসে আপনার লাখের উপরে এক লাখ টাকার উপরে বেগুন পাবো এই এগারো এগারো জমিতে তো এত টাকা তো কোনো আবাদে হবে না আশেপাশের লোক তো সবাই বলছে আগামীতে এটাই এই চাষ করবো বেসন চাষতে সবাই বেসন চাষতে আমার বেসন দেওয়া প্রথম বলছে এই চারা কর্মী পাইলে আমি সরকার দিয়েছে বলছে তাহলে আমাদের দেওয়া অংশ দেওয়া মানে সরকার তো আর নেওয়া লাগবে না আমার এখানে বেসন দিলেই হবে এই বেসনই হবে All right, so uh, thanks for playing that video. Um, it's just always good to hear multiple views about the BT eggplant experience in Bangladesh. So I've heard that our farmers are very thankful that their crops are now pesticide free. So thank you so much for um, sharing that um, video. Hope other countries such as um, Philippines, for example, so hope that um, we can ex also experience um, growing BT eggplant in the coming years. Okay, um, just a reminder um, for all the participants, um, if you have questions, you may type it in the Q&A box. So again, it's located at the bottom of your screen and we shall accommodate your questions later during the panel discussion. Okay, uh, moving on to our next speakers. Okay, so now uh, we are very fortunate to have two farmers from Vietnam who will talk about their experiences in growing um, GM corn. So our first farmer um, is a lady. So um, she is Miss Vu Thi Thin from Yen Lak Vin Phuc province. Hopefully I pronounce it correctly. Uh, while our second farmer is Mr. Hok Kong Bay from Dien Chau Nghe An province. Okay, and then by the way, for the English translation, um, please click interpretation um, at the bottom of your screen and choose English. Okay, so with that, um, let us all welcome Ms. Thin and Mr. Bay. Are you now ready? Um, Ms. Thin, would you please go first? Are, are you there? All right, can you please unmute Ms. Thin? Miss Teen. Yeah, can you please? Thank you. Good thing I bật mic. Okay. You can go ahead. Có nghe được rồi. Vâng, cô ơi, xin mời cô bắt đầu trình bày về uh, kinh nghiệm cũng như cái đánh giá của mình đối với cả cây uh, ngô công nghệ sinh học đi ạ. Ừ. À, cái uh, cây ngô biến đổi gen này vậy? Vâng, tôi xin uh, chia sẻ về cây ngô uh, biến đổi gen. Trước kia là gia đình nhà tôi cũng làm uh, rất nhiều đất. Thế nhưng mà mấy năm trở về đây là chồng chỉ có một đồ, một ha thôi thì các cháu nó đi học nó đi công ty và bán hàng để trông cháu nên bây giờ gia đình tôi cũng trồng một ha mấy cái năm trở về trước từ năm 2016 trở về trước ấy, là gia đình tôi trồng cái ngô thường nhưng từ năm 2016 là có cái ngô biến đổi gen à, trở về đây thì là nhà gia đình tôi trồng cái ngô biến đổi gen qua các lớp tập huấn và được các công ty tư vấn là cái ngô biến đổi gen này là uh, chịu được uh, sâu bệnh và nở thì mầm nó đều, nó khỏe, mầm con phát triển tốt. 
It's yeah. very uniform, but it will go very well. So ever since we have grown BT corn. So usually it is resistant to pests. So it takes me less time to work in the field. When I used to grow traditional corn every five or seven days, I had to spray pesticides and I had to visit the field, but now I don't have to do it anymore. I don't have to hire more people to spray pesticides. So I um, focus more on the grocery store that I am running. So it's very convenient. So if there are many pests, I used to uh, have to uh, spray pesticides five to six times. So 20,000 BND uh, per container of pesticide, and then 30,000 BND for labor cost. So it was very costly. But now it's very convenient because I only have to do it once. So it helped me save a lot of money. So basically it helped me save about um, 80,000 BND. So it means that in, uh, in total, it can help me save a lot of money compared to the past. So with the money that I've saved, I can buy fertilizer to enrich my soil, or I can use it for household expenditure. So it's really fortunate now that I have a lot of extra income. Compared to traditional corn, GM corn grows a lot better and it is not affected by insects, by pests. So definitely it gives me higher yield. So it's usually uh, 220 to 240 uh, hundred weights. Um, compared to the past, traditional corns are usually, were usually broken in half and uh, it was affected by pests. So the yield was much lower. If I have to use pesticide, uh, then uh, it is a lot more convenient because I don't have to do it many times anymore. So usually, I will use pesticides, fertilizers, and uh, fungicides in order for my corn to grow well. So that is my personal experience with the benefits that GM corn has brought to me. Talking about pests, there are witnesses regarding BT corn. If it rains too much, then it is also affected by the climate. And sometimes it's affected by fungi. So there are witnesses definitely to the GM corn that I'm growing. That's my experience, the pros and the cons of uh, BT corn or GM corn. I can usually sell it at uh, 1 million 200. 1.2 million um, BNT. So it's a lot higher than in the past, definitely. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Miss Teen. Um, 
and I think uh, for for our next speaker, um, yes, Mr. Bay, can you please go ahead? And then later, Ms. Teen, um, during the Q&A session, um, please be there and then uh, while we um, answer the questions. So, thank you. So, hello everyone. My name is Ho Kong Bai from Zien Chou District, Yi'an Province. As a corn grower for many years, I can definitely tell the distinction between conventional corn and BT corn. Uh, and that the benefits is that the kernels are a lot more uniform than conventional corn. It grows very well. It is resistant to pests. We, I don't even have to use pesticide, not even once. So it helps me reduce the cost of processing and the cost of pesticides. It is very climate resilient. The yield definitely is higher than conventional corn. In addition to cost, reduction in terms of pesticides, it gives me higher income. Ever since I have received this uh, seed, I have trusted it and have grown it. And uh, we don't use conventional seeds any longer. When we received the GM uh, corn seeds, we did have a look at it from the perspective of profitability and we were very confident in the potential of the corn so we're now very happy to see how far we have come and we're grateful to the government for what they have brought to our province and to my family in particular over thank you Oh, okay. uh, thank you, Mr. Bay and Mr. Tin again. Um, and then Bowie. Um, yeah, all right, here. <laughs> I can see myself now. Uh, Ms. Ms. Tin and Mr. Bay, um, again, thank you so much um, for your sharings. Thank you for sharing your um, your journey. Um, I've heard that um, you experience um, that the yield is higher, and then you have higher income, and then more savings due to the GM corn planting. So thank you. And then again, stay tuned. Um, we will wait for you um, during the Q&A session. OK. And then now, let's um, move on to the next um, session. Um, for now, um, our next model farmer is Mr. Um, Bilar Israel Khan from South Punjab, Pakistan. He will share his experiences in planting BT cotton through a recording. And then later, he'll join us during the Q&A session. So without further ado, let's all welcome Mr. Khan. So Bowie, please play the video. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Nahmudu nusalli ala rasulihil kareem. Let me first introduce myself. My name is Bilal Israel Khan. I am about 73 years old and I have been farming uh, for almost 50 years now. And um, I did my graduation in agriculture and economics from the University of California, Berkeley. And uh, my farm is situated uh, uh, at the end of the Punjab province. Uh, <laughs> after that, the Sindh province starts, and it's a basically desert kind of climate. Uh, we uh, we grow quite a few crops, uh, like uh, our main crops are sugarcane, cotton, wheat. Uh, mangoes, citrus, we also grow maize, uh, especially for silage. Um, similarly, uh, guavas and uh, uh, greenhouse vegetables. I have about uh, 500 acres of land 
and um, I am also um, engaged with the government uh, on a lot of committees uh, to represent farmer viewpoints and give my input. Um, so uh, let me just uh, start by uh, giving you a few details uh, about um, the statistics. The agriculture is about 18.5% of GDP and 44% uh, of all workforce is engaged in agriculture and 23.4 million hectares uh, of land is agriculture land uh, and 80 percent of the agriculture land is irrigated it's irrigated either by tube wells uh, or um, mostly by uh, canal water we have one of the best um, we have one of the best canal systems in the world and uh, more than 90% uh, of the productivity comes from irrigated land. Uh, land holding is primarily very small. It, the average farm size is about 6.4 acres. And major crops are wheat, which is ranked 7th uh, in the world uh, in terms of productivity. Cotton is 4th, rice is 13th. Sugar, coin, sugar cane is sixth and maize which is now coming up. Uh, as far as crop biotechnology adoption is concerned, cotton is the only biotech crop in Pakistan with over 90% adoption rate. It was first introduced in the country in the early 2000s through informal means initial performance and yield gains were very good however the absence of the organized industry ownership and over, overall lack of stewardship the technology started to lose efficacy and this happened at a time when global adoption of bt cotton peaked and consensus on its benefits firmed up uh, it's very unfortunate that newer generation of bt cotton have not been introduced in the country due to intellectual property infringement concerns. Uh, I personally have had first-hand experience of visiting farmer fields um, in America and Australia and their research facilities uh, and uh, the propriety of their stewardship of BT cotton technology. And the benefits uh, of this to the farmer are totally undeniable. Biotech traits in maize is another very exciting prospect, especially in the context of uh, the growing fall army worm menace. The approval for biotech maize in Pakistan is currently stalled due to government um, lethargy, indifference. And, uh, but hopefully um, adoption of biotech maize by China in 2023 will hopefully pave the way for commercial approvals uh, in Pakistan. Um, so, uh, some more um, uh, information about uh, biotechnology in cotton is that um, at present uh, there are two pests uh, in cotton which are becoming extremely difficult to control because they have developed uh, uh, very solid resistance against all the new all the known chemistry uh, all the known pesticides in the market and these are white fly which is a sucking pest and pink ballworm which is as they call a chewing insect and um, no matter uh, what the farmers spray or how many times they spray uh, these two pests, uh, they, it just doesn't seem to face them at all. Uh, luckily, um, this has uh, incentivized uh, a lot of research, uh, especially by uh, private seed companies, to um, 
to insert uh, genes uh, in cotton which uh, will make it uh, resistant to uh, pink ballworm and white fly just at uh, just as at present uh, uh, the the cotton varieties which we have are are resistant to uh, heliothis and uh, spotted ballworm uh hopefully by next year um, at least for pink ballworm uh, we might uh, be seeing uh, some planting occurring uh, and uh, actually if uh, we have control of pink ballworm then it's easier to control white fly also because if you don't have to spray pyrethroids for uh, pink ballworm then you are able to save the predatory insects or the friendly insects which um, which then uh, control the white fly uh, by themselves so, and uh, uh, in the absence of uh, resistant varieties uh, what we have been doing is um, trying to control um, the pink ballworm uh, with the pheromone, pheromone traps and uh, uh, pink ballworm ropes and uh, white fly uh, amazingly it's uh, extremely attracted towards the yellow color so we uh, use um, uh, sticky traps uh, of yellow color and we place them uh, in the fields at about the rate of 12 or 15 uh, traps per acre and um, the, the white fly is attracted to that yellow color and then it gets stuck to the to that um, cylinder or uh, screen whatever you use so that's a relatively uh, environmentally friendly method of controlling this so um, unfortunately uh, Pakistan cotton has uh, really been um, going downhill for a long time now from a peak production of about 14 million bales uh, some 20 years ago uh, we are now down to almost 5, five million which is just really pathetic and uh, it's because farmers have become so discouraged that uh, they have uh, reduced their cotton um, planting acreage uh, drastically. Okay, I, I'd like to close uh, my talk uh, for something which I should have actually said in the very beginning that I am extremely grateful and very appreciative that crop life has uh, taken this initiative of uh, interacting uh, with farmers uh, around uh, Asia and uh, it's a great honor and privilege and um, I hope uh, the benefits accrue um, you know beyond our expectations uh, it's unfortunate that uh, we have to do this virtually uh, otherwise uh, oh, I'm sure that if we had been able to uh, do the uh, proper exchange uh, uh, that would have really opened up uh, the, the horizons for uh, all the involved farmers but uh, hopefully uh, we will um, achieve our aims to um, some extent uh, uh, the, that we are aiming for and I do wish um, that this uh, initiative uh, attains a lot of success and uh, all the participants they benefit from it. Thank you. Yep. Um, thank you, Mr. Bilal Israel Khan, for sharing your journey with us. Um, in terms of using the BT cotton to control pests such as the pink ballworm in your field. So as you mentioned, we also hope that um, maybe if not next year in the future, we can also have the face-to-face uh, -face, um, interaction for this um, farmers exchange program. Okay, um, similar with the other um, farmer resource persons that we have. So please, um, um, be there, Mr. Khan, during the um, towards the end of the session for the Q&A. Okay, and then uh, moving on to the, to our last um, 
former resource speaker. So last but not the least, um, he's our former from the Mangilag Norte, Candelaria, Quezon from Philippines. He's a successful BT corn farmer, and he is also the president of Gintong Butil Agricultural Commodities and Services Company. He will share his story through a video he prepared for us this afternoon. So without further ado, let us all welcome Mr. Emerson Malion Agno. Thank you. Ako po si Emerson M. Agno, isa pong farmer, part owner ng Gintong Butil Agricultural Commodities and Services Company. At sa kasalukuyan rin po, ako po ang presidente ng Samahan ng Masisipag na Magmamais ng Mangilag Norte at vice presidente ng Quezon Corn Growers Farmers Federation. Nang ibang bansa po ako noong 2006 sa Bansang Qatar at na kalabing dalawang taon po ako doon, nung pong kami ay nakapundar at nagretiro ang tatay ko, nagumpisa po uli kaming pumasok sa negosyo ng pagsasaka. At ang amin pong nalinyahan ay pagmamais. Based po kasi sa pangangailangan ng kalabarson, ay kulang po ang supply ng mais ng kalabarson Mostly nang gagaling pa ito sa Norte. Kung ang pangangailangan po halimbawa ng kalabarson ay 1,000 metric tons, halimbawa lang po ito pero mas marami po doon, ang kaya lang pong i-produce ng buong kalabarson ay 5 to 8% ng 1,000 metric tons na yon. So, ang, 9, ang 95 to 92% po ng mais na ginigiling sa Quezon Ah, uh, Quezon Batangas o sa Calabarzon ay nanggagaling pa po sa ibang probinsya which is mostly galing Isabela Cagayan. Kung nandiyan yung market na kaya mong suplayan, so pagkakataon mo nang magtanim ng mais. Sa GMO naman po kasi based po sa experience namin, pag nagtanim po kayo ng non-GMO, unang-una po prone siya sa lahat ng peste. Ang hira pong alagaan, then ang harvest pa po ay napakakunti. Which is, I think, around 30% lang kung i-compare mo nyo sa GMO binhi ang gamit. As per uh, record po namin, ang pinakamataas po naming harvest na naranasan is 8.1 tons dry per hectare. Kung yun po ay non-GMO ang gagamitin, hindi kami lalayo sa average ng DA ng non-GMO is around 2 to 3 tons per hectare. So, yun po ang dahilan. See, since magpapagod na rin lang naman kami sa lupa, ay di, yun na lang high yielding ang aming gagamitin. Although medyo mas mataas siya ng konti sa sa OPB o sa non-GMO, pero mas yung namang benefit ng yield, basta maalagaan mo ng mabuti at hindi ka sa lantay ng anumang kalamidad, eh, mababawi mo naman yung cost ng, ng, G, ng GMO seeds gawa ng mas mataas yung harvest mo. Tungkol sa paggamit ng mga chemicals, uh, kailangan siya. Mostly ang chemicals lang namin ginagamit is herbicide. Yung mga pesticide, insecticide is as per needed. Kaya lang, iwasan naman sana yung Basta-basta na lang gagamit ng mga chemicals kasi may mga nababalitaan din ako gumagamit ng mga hindi approved ng FPA. Yung mga illegal na chemicals na pumapasok sa bansa na sobrang tatapang na nakakasira ng kalikasan. So, yun ang ano. Ang paggamit ng chemicals is kailangan is responsable. Maging responsable yung mga farmer. So, Simula po noong 2015, kahit po ako'y nasa ibang bansa, ay katulong-tulong po ako ng tatay ko sa pagmamanage ng aming mga taniman at nagumpisa na rin po kaming bumili ng mga equipment para parentahan sa mga kapwa namin magsasaka. Ang layunin po ng kumpanya naming itinayo ay para makatulong sa mga kapwa naming magmamais dito po sa lalawigan ng Quezon. 
ang pinaka-advokasiya po namin ay madagdagan ang kita ng mga magsasaka ng mais. Dahil po ang inire-reklamo po namin, kagaya po namin, naranasan din po namin uh, baratin sa presyo ng mga mamimili, yung pong mga tinatawag na middleman. Kaya po ang naging advokasiya ng aming kumpanya ay hanggat maaari ay tanggalin yung mga middleman para po naman umangat ang buhay ng mga magsasaka ng mais dito sa lalawigan. Sa ngayon po, kami po ay may mga kapartner na magsasaka sa iba-ibang lugar. Halos buong Quezon po, Laguna at Batangas na po yung aming mga area na natutulungan farmer. Sa ngayon po, ang ino-offer po naming serbisyo ay simula po sa pag prepare ng lupa, simula po pagtatraktora, hanggang sa pagbebenta po ng mais ay inaalalaya na po namin yung mga membro ng samahan at saka yung pong mga kapartner naming mga magtatanim. Ang sarili lang po naming taniman sa ngayon, yung ako na mismo pong direkta na ako ang namamahala ay 15 hektarya. Pero kung ito total po lahat kasama po ang mga part partner naming farmer at mga samahang aming katulong sa pagmamais ay siguro po ay nasa 300 hectares lahat yun. Noong 2018 ng around January, pinorchase namin yung una namin dryer. And itinayo na rin yung aming bodega ng mais dito, dito sa Mangilag Norte. Yung isa, through the assistance of Department of Agriculture, sa ngayon, dalawa na yung drying dryer namin doon sa bodega. Kasi po, naranasan po namin no, nung wala pa po kaming drying facility, kahit po gano'ng kamahal ang mais, since wala kaming kakayahang tuyuin ang aming mais, at mahirap naman pong ibenta ang hindi tuyong mais, ay ang nananaga na po ay yung mga middleman. Binabarat po nila ang presyo. Kahit gano'ng po kataas ng presyo ng mais, ay minsan po ay ang laki ng bawas nila. Saya po hanggang ngayon ay ganun pa rin po. Kaya po yung iba naming mga partner na farmer ay sa amin na lumalapit na kasi po ang ginagawa po namin kung halimbawa po kayo ang farmer, halimbawa po natuyo na namin ang inyong mais, ikukuha po namin kayo ng purchase order sa mga sinusuplaya namin feed mill at poultry para direktan yung maibenta doon yung inyong produkto. Para po kung magkano man yung kikitain ng middleman, ay mapapunta na po doon sa farmer yung kita. Based sa uh, pakikipag-usap ko sa mga farmer, ang kailangan-kailangan ay i-educate ang farmer sa mga bagong technology. Kasi ang dami pa rin na old school na tinatawag ang ginagawa nila. And at the same time, ang problema, hindi gumaganda yung yield nila, yung harvest nila is kukunti. Pangalawa po, kailangan po ng mga machineries at post-harvest facility. Sa totoo lang po, yung dryer namin dalawa ay pagkapanahon ng harvest season ay 24 hours halos tumatakbo. Ang dami pa po namin tinatanggihan na farmer kasi hindi kaya ng capacity namin. Ini-encourage ko rin yung mga maliliit na farmer na magsama-sama. Mag-consolidate sila para mas madaling pumasok sa negotiation, lalo na sa presyo, kung sama-sama yung farmer. Yes, I think that's the um, last presentation that we have. Um... We have already completed um, presentation of, of all our farmers. So, Mr. Agno, um, thank you for that insightful um, testimonial. And also, thank you for stressing out the need um, to use registered chemicals and the importance of responsible use. So, for, um, for the next um, part of our um, program, it will be the Q&A session. So this time, we have the chance to ask questions to our farmers. So feel free to ask anything and everything since um, we're very fortunate to have them here. 
Um, for everyone who wants to ask questions or send comments regarding our topics, again, kindly type it in the Q&A tab. Okay. So do we have um, all the farmers now? Have we spotlighted them already? Um, I think we also need uh, Mr. Bay, Bowie, to be spotlight spotlighted. Okay. Sorry for that noise. And also Miss Ai Chen. Let us wait for a while. Okay, while we wait, so I'm checking now the Q&A box. Okay, um, I received the first question here um, from Mr. Muhammad um, Kamrul Hassan. Is GM corn resistant to fall armyworm? So perhaps for this question, I can just provide a quick answer. Um, I think th this one, um, it's better to really um, check with your um, um, government, with the regulatory agencies, um, of which of the GM corn has been registered um, against the fall armyworm. So here in the Philippines, there are um, various um, BT um, events already registered in the Philippines. So such as I think more um, MUR162 and MON89 and perhaps TC1507. So um, kindly check with your um, respective um, government agencies. Okay, so for the next um, question, are we now okay? I'm still, we're still waiting for, I can see Mr. Bay already um, with his camera on so that I can ask the, the next question uh, for Vietnam. Okay, can you still hear me? Can I get a thumbs yes. up? Yeah. Yes, we can. <laughs> All right, thank you. So this one's um, the next question. I can't pronounce correctly and I'll try. Sing Lip Fal, um, his question is, um, are there any challenges for farmers in selling BT corn compared to the traditional corn in Vietnam? So this question goes to our um, um, Vietnamese farmers, um, Ms. Tin and Mr. Um, Bay. Again, the question is, are there any challenges for farmers in selling BT corn compared to the traditional corn in Vietnam? Uh, am I live? Yes, yes, can hear you. Please go ahead. All right, so. Talking about GM corn, actually the quality is so good, the customers actually prefer BT corn. Because um, in the past, we had to use a lot of chemicals and pesticides, but now with GM corn, the quality is good, the kernels are uniform, it is uh, not dangerous to their health because we don't use much chemicals so the price is better compared to conventional corns they are affected by pests so they use a lot of chemicals and customers don't like it at all so uh, with our new corns we ha we never have any uh, we have not much in stock at all because the customers the companies know the quality of the gm corn so they're always in demand 
So that is really great for us as farmers. So that's point number one. Point number two, we don't have to use a lot of fertilizers at all because it grows so well. So we don't really use much fertilizers. Then customers actually also prefer it. So there's no reason why they don't like it. They sell out like hotcakes. So we don't even have any to sell for our customers. Now we need to produce even more than now. So that's all. Thank you so much, Mr. B, um, for answering that question. Would Miss Tin also would like to add? Or are we okay? Okay. So I think we can um, go to the next one. Um, here, from Irish Lobina. Um, what are the challenges you faced on disseminating BT technology information to your co-farmers? So this goes to um, to anyone, to all our um, resource persons, uh, farmer resource persons. So again, the question is, what are the challenges you faced on disseminating BT technology in or information to your co-farmers? So who would like to go first? Okay, maybe I can ask Mr. Um, Agno, would you like to answer that? The Thank question you. is uh, the challenges to disseminate the information, right? Yes, what are the challenges you face? So far in the Philippines, GM uh, corn is already accepted by by if not by all mostly of the corn farmers so it's not uh we uh we are not experiencing any problem convincing them to use bt corn because it's already i think it's all over the philippines where most farmers are using bt corn already so it's um i don't know in other countries the situation but here in the philippines it's already acceptable and no need to explain to the uh, to the to other farmers uh this technology but if uh this uh we only experience some of this question to the new if somebody wants to plant for the first time so we are explaining that this kind of seeds is a GMO seeds uh, manufactured in a, by the company. The benefit is this and this then. And if they have questions and we can answer, we are answering it. But as a whole, it's not a problem in the Philippines to, to disseminate the information about Bitcoin. Thank you for answering that question, Mr. Magno. Um, perhaps I can also ask um, Mr. Raman, um, our um, BT eggplant um, grower for, from Bangladesh. Can you help us answer that question um, again? So this is for the perspective of our um, um, farmers in Bangladesh. <laughs> So again, the question is, what are the challenges you faced on disseminating BT technology or information to your co-farmers? Thank you. All right. Marketing it is from and 
unfortunately, the, I think the light is breaking. Thank you, Mr. Rachel, for translating um, the answer. Um, another question, um, Mr. Raman, again, another question for you. Um, do you get higher price for the BT eggplant compared to non-BT eggplant? And how about sourcing of seeds? He got the same price uh, of beauty brings up uh, compared to our traditional variety. Okay. Anything else you want to add or are we good? They are saying the production uh, technology of BT beans are is more cheaper than our traditional uh, varieties because uh, there is no cost of insecticide application and uh, uh, health hazard uh, is he want to say that uh, this is the more useful and holistic uh, farming than other brings and varieties. Good to hear that. Thank you, Mr. Rachel, for um, the interpretation. Okay, I'm checking again the QA. So this is uh, the, the next question is for Mr. Agno from Philippines. So um, what is your biggest encounter um, of the pests and this, or diseases that almost wipe out your crops and how did you manage to recover from the damages? Actually, we haven't experienced any major pests in planting BT corn. Uh, we experience uh, little by little only uh, this uh, last last planting season one of our area was uh, affected by whole army worm but it's only around 10 to 20 percent we haven't experienced uh, in my six years in our six years of planting different kinds of bt corn we haven't experienced uh, being damaged by pests. But because uh, BT corn is already resistant to the major pest, that is uh, the major problem 
with corn. But if you are planting the one they they call it human corn, like the white white corn and the sweet corn, this this kind of corn is uh, some of the farmers I know they experience almost eighty to ninety percent damage to their crop because of different kinds of worm, especially now the fall army worm. So for BT corn, it's not a problem. We haven't experienced any major pest. The only problem we usually experience is through nature, like typhoons and other things. But for pest, it's easy to uh, it's easy to manage the pest that is being uh, the pest that is affecting BT corn. So usually it's not it's not that much. It's usually 10 to 20 percent only, unlike the one they call human corn. Sometimes you will experience even 100 percent loss. Thank you, um, Mr. Agno, for um, answering that question. And then um, the next question, this goes to um, Mr. Agno and then our Vietnamese farmers, Mr. Bay and uh, Ms. Tin. Um, and also, perhaps later we can also ask for the BT cotton. So what are your recent farming techniques that enhances production of corn and BT cotton? What particular barrier exists in encouraging um, your fellow non-adoptive farmers to use the technology you've been using? So can we ask first um, Mr. Bay or Ms. Teen? Would you like to answer that? Around the farming techniques that enhances production of um, BT corn. And the, and the particular barriers uh, which exist in encouraging um, your fellow non-adoptive farmers to use the technology. Can we also request um, our interpreter to help um, Mr. Bay and Mr. Tin? Yes, I have yes, translated you. your questions. Mấy thiếu rừng nghe thấy gì đó. Cô nghe được rồi. So compared to conventional corn, I think I can save from end to end about 200,000 BND. Uh, so in terms of the cost of pesticides, fertilizers, and labor, because the normal corns are affected by pests, the BT corns are resistant to pests, so I can save a lot of money. So um, in my experience, in terms of both the labor cost and um, the pesticides, and it's about 200,000 BND per sow. So is a unique... Um, so uh, from start to, uh, to finish, uh, so for labor cost and then all machinery and everything, it can help me save in total 850,000 BND.
Because compared to uh, conventional corns, uh, the cost right now for pesticide per container is about 20,000 B, B, 20, BND plus the manual 30,000 BND. So that's 50,000 BND in total. So it will also help me save time because with conventional corns, they are affected by pests. So I have to visit the fields a lot more often. So it helped me save both cost and also my effort. Over. Thank you for, um, for your answer. And uh, I don't know if, um, do we also, um, have a answer from Mr. B. Uh, yeah, I'm clear now. So, ladies and gentlemen, so on our land in the An province, uh, we grow BT corn in the spring crop season. So, usually, our yield is significantly higher than uh, other varieties. Compared to conventional corns, I can save uh, five times. So we spend five times less money compared to conventional corns. Um, according to our record, per 500 um, meters squared, we spend about 750,000 BND. So compared to conventional corns, that's 20% less in terms of input, inputs and in terms of the consumption markets, our quality of products is higher. So the price of our corn, BT corn is higher than conventional corns. The yield is higher, significantly higher than conventional corns. For conventional corns, uh, usually per 500 um, meter uh, meter squared, usually uh, 300 kilograms, uh, but for BT corns it's 350. So that's my experience. In terms of advocating for uh, the, the, the corns, it's usually the struggle in the first two years, one or two years, we struggled a little bit, but then in the third and the fourth year, everything went pretty smoothly. Uh, in certain households, they asked us, okay, so if the, uh, the worms eat the corn, they'll die. But if consumers, human beings eat it, will they die too? So that's the biggest question that I've received. Uh, it is hard for me to explain to them the science behind it because I myself am not very sure or well-versed in how I should explain this, but that is the frequently asked question. Uh, so I cannot properly um, respond to the farmers regarding that question. Over. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. B, um, for your answer. So in terms of um, the communication, so we have heard yesterday about the, um, the importance of science communication and about um, the, the work of the extensionists in terms of helping us cascade this information. Um, for the, yeah, I think I only have a um, few minutes left, but then for the last question, so this goes to all our farmers. So the question is, um, any thoughts 
how farmers' voice can be mobilized or used for political leaders to listen that farmers need plant science innovation. So again, um, this goes to, um, to all our um, farmer resource speakers. So do you have any thoughts how you can, how the farmer's voice can be mobilized or used for our political leaders to listen so that the farmers, uh, that the farmers need plant science innovation? I can give you some time to uh, think about it first. And then let me know if um, anyone would like to answer. Okay, so perhaps I can uh, go first um, for uh, Mr. Agno, Philippines. Uh, the question is, uh, I think uh, the best way for the people in the government to listen to the farmer is to Farmer, like for example, in the Philippines, they are in, they are now encouraging what they call clustering. So in every barangay or in every town, they are organizing all the farmers into a group, so that when you have something to say with the government, I think it's uh, it's easier for them to hear us if we are if we will do it as a group, unlike if we are, if we will do it individually. So I think that's the best way. Uh, for example, like us here in our province, we have a federation that uh, all, the mem uh, all the corn farmers of Quezon is a member. So I think we are, uh, we are, I think, we are composed of 28 towns of Quezon, the one who is growing corn. And every town is, I think, maybe the member of each town is more or less 100 to 200 corn farmers. So you multiply it with 28. So it's, it's uh, that's why if we want something from the provincial government of Quezon, we write as a group. We are using the name of the federation. And usually we they are responding positively, unlike if we are going to request individually. I think that's the best way. Thank you, Mr. Agno. Um, how about um, Mr. Raman? Um, can you help uh, Mr. Rachel? by uh, um, interpreting that question. Let me know if you want me to repeat the question. Mr. Rachel, are you still there? Because I can see that or you're on mute. Mr. Raman and Mr. Rachel. Thank you. Yeah, you want me to repeat the question? Yeah, yeah. I, I can't hear you well. Yes, on, on behalf of my farmer, I am answering your question. The, the political leaders of in our countries are very positive to introduce of GMO food, but they also uh, passed a rule in our parliament to uh, insert the GMO food in case of special eating. I can't hear you well, Mr. Rachel. Line is breaking. Can you, can you hear me, Mr. Rachel? Oh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I cannot hear you well. So, 
Yeah, apologies. So perhaps we can um, just continue with our um, Vietnamese farmer. Sorry, Mr. Rachel, I can't hear you well. Um, Mr. Bay and Ms. Tin, can you please answer the question? So again, for, for all the participants, the question is, do you have any thoughts how farmers' voice can be mobilized or used for political leaders to listen that farmers need plant science innovation? So in uh, Diễn Châu District, Nghệ An Province in Vietnam, the regulators are working with cooperatives. So a cooperative is a collective group of farmers, by the way. So most or the majority of the farmers are part of a cooperative. So the voice is raised through these cooperatives and then the co-ops will report to the government. So we, in terms of like how to advocate for um, biotechnologies, we can convey clear messages. We can tell them that it is safe for the farmers and it is safe for the consumers because we don't have to use a lot of plant protection drugs. So number two, it can help cut costs. So the co-ops will share that experience to the local government because now that we have higher income because we can save costs, then we will bring more revenue to the province. And the regulators, the local government is very happy because over the past few years, a lot of investment has been made in the agriculture sector, particularly in the development of co-ops. So our feedback is always very well received. And that's the reason why um, all the farmers are well aware of our responsibility for using pesticides and chemicals in an accountable way. And um, that's the reason why GM crops uh, are also uh, an interest of the government. And most of the farmers are happy and they are well received by the farmers and also by the regulators. Over. Thank you, Mr. B. And how about Miss um, Teen? Thank you. Uh, personally speaking, I'm also a part of uh, a co-op and also the part of the farmer union. Uh, since BT corn was introduced, my family have quickly adopted it and it's so beneficial for the farmers. It grows well, like I've mentioned. It is very strong. It is resistant to pests. So it will help save the effort of spraying pesticides. It saves me the effort of visiting the fields. So ever since I have advocated for it among the, my co-farmers that they should do this with me, the yield is much, much higher because the corns are not affected or broken in half. So in my experience, it's so important 
to advocate for it among the farmers because it will help them save time, save money, and save effort. It's very profitable too. It is our responsibility to raise our voice too because we ourselves can see the benefits of GM crops. Like I've mentioned, I can save a lot of money about, like I've mentioned, 2 million VND. So when I work with a farmer union, I tell them my voice, hey, this is how much I can save. This is how much labor I can save. So why don't we just share this experience by the farmer union to other local farmers. So I have also participated in that effort over the past three years. I've convinced a lot of my co-farmers to plant GM crops over the years. Over. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Tin, for your answer. So I'm hearing similar um, response to that question. So it's important to really um, be involved in farmer groups, union or cooperative. So thank you so much. I think that's the last question that I want to ask while we still have um, some more questions in the Q&A tab, but for the meantime, and also due to the time constraint, uh, we will just answer your questions via email. Again, uh, thank you for our um, farmers, resource persons, thank you so much for your presentation and also for, um, for the Q&A session. Okay. Um, and then let's now um, move to the next um, portion of this um, webinar. So just for some of um, the concluding remarks. So for me, it's always a privilege and it's always heartwarming for me to really hear the experiences and the journey of our farmers and the impact of biotech um, crops in their lives. So our farmers are indeed considered as our modern day heroes. They are the frontliners. Um, so as they say, if you ate today, you should thank a farmer. Hope more farmers will have the chance to grow and experience different biotech crops in different countries. Um, for the, I think we're going to have a poll um, before the um, fun part of the session. So may we just ask a minute or two of your time to answer this poll. So it's now flashing. So I'm just going to read. Um, please evaluate based on the topic. Number one, farmers' testimonial in growing um, biotech crops. So please select um, one. So extremely satisfied, satisfied, average, dissatisfied, and or extremely dissatisfied. For number two, overall, how will you rate this session? So again, please select one. Are we done? Thank you so much for this. So uh, here we're flashing um, the feedbacks. So for number one, um, the farmer's testimonial in growing um, biotech crops. So extremely satisfied, around 40%, satisfied 54%. And then average is 6%. For the overall um, um, feedback for this session, so extremely satisfied around 38% and satisfied 56% and average is 6%. So thank you so much for um, all your feedback. Um, we will use this information um, to improve and better our future um, webinars. Okay, so for the last part, um, now we're going to, to, to um, I think um, many of you are waiting for this one. So every day um, we're giving away a $20 voucher. Um, the mechanics are simple. So we will show one question and then you have to type the answer on the chat box. Again, in the chat box on your screen. So the first three persons to get the correct answer wins. 
So are, are you now ready? Or is anyone, is everyone ready? Okay, we're going to do a countdown. So we will show the questions. So here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so the question. So this is to date. Which of the statements below is false? So A, Jim Cotton is approved for cultivation in Pakistan. B, GM sugarcane is approved for cultivation in Indonesia. C, GM eggplant is approved for cultivation in Bangladesh. Or D, GM rice is approved for cultivation in Vietnam. Okay, so I'm seeing many um, answers here in the chat box. Okay, and then someone from the organizers, right, organizers, can you please help me identify the three winners? Okay, we're just waiting. So let me know once we have it. Okay, so well, just while we are waiting for the results, let me invite you again for tomorrow. So this is the fourth day. We will still have a session for tomorrow. And let and then um, it would be same link and same time. So 1 to 2.30 or around 3 p.m. Philippine time. Tomorrow, we will talk about the importance of gene bank in crop improvement and the seed quality. So there will be some virtual tours as well. And then just, okay. So going back to the $20 question. So the correct um, answer is D. So for the winners, um, first, it's Kariel Olvido. Number two, Norhamin Sandang. And then number three, Carl Anthony Pedregosa. So congratulations to those um, three winners. And then our, our participant, um, our, our colleagues, our, the host, the organizers will just um, get in touch with you. Okay, so this ends our webinar for today. So once again, I am Mimi Rodriguez. I am your moderator for today. And see you again tomorrow, same time, same link. So in behalf of the organizers, the Crop Life Asia, Crop Life Philippines, Biotech Coalition of the Philippines, thank you to our presenters and thank you to all the participants for attending the fourth day of the 15th Pant Asia Farmers Exchange Program. So maraming salamat po at ingat po tayong lahat.